Welcome back, everybody. I hope you all had a phenomenal, fun-filled, and safe summer. It's a new season in more ways than one. Tonight, we're kicking off season three of On the Avenue, and we have a lot of great things in store. Stay tuned. We entered a new church year, and now all roads lead to our 60th church anniversary. Each September, Pastor Cosby begins the new church year with the question, where do we go from here? Well, this year, the answer was, we are going back to church. I don't know about you, but I am so excited about that. And later on, Pastor will join us to share some information on what that will look like and how we can safely be a part of the celebration. Speaking of safety, last week, vaccinations were made available again on our church campus, and we hope that you were able to do your part in slowing the spread of COVID-19. If not, please know that there are many places in Houston and the surrounding areas that offer the vaccine, and it is free of charge. We ask that you pray about it and make a decision that would save your life and so many others. It's October, and that means it's time for the fall edition of Wednesdays in the Word. Join us online every Wednesday this month, starting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock for a wonderful time of worship as we hear the Word of God from four powerful preachers from across the country. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we've been hearing the words, Wheeler wherever. Many of you have been using the hashtag on social media. You've printed it on t-shirts, and you've even connected with some Wheelerites in your area. We have realized that Wheeler wherever is not limited to seeing someone with a patient, positive, prayerful present t-shirt on in the grocery store, or finding out that your coworker is also a member. We are literally everywhere, even outside of the United States. Can you believe that? A few of our Wheeler Wherever family members outside of the state of Texas hopped into the Zoom room to share their stories of virtual membership. Let's hear from them now. Hello and welcome to The Avenue. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you? Doing great. How about you? I'm good. Awesome. So for the people who are watching, can you please let us know what your name is and where you're from? Sure. My name is Janie Davis, and I'm from Vallejo, California. Wow. California. So as you know, we've mentioned, as we talked about, you are a part of Wheeler Wherever. So all the way in California, what made you join a church in Third Ward of Houston, Texas? I have an interesting story for you. So um, when the pandemic um, started, I worked for a healthcare organization, a large health advisor permanente, and I was, I had went online to a couple churches to try to find that virtual experience where I felt like I was in church because I was missing that. And I dialed into Wheeler uh, Avenue Baptist Church, and from the first day up until through last Sunday, my experience has been exceptional. The church represents excellence. And not only did I did I join in on the Sunday services and Bible study, but also participate in the prayer call every morning, every Wednesday morning. So I'm up at 4 a.m. <laughs> dialing in to the prayer line because it is so phenomenal. It is so exceptional. There's only one time I missed, and it's because I was sick in the hospital. But other than that, I have been on that call every Wednesday for a year and a half now. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So what is the thing that you appreciate the most about virtual membership? Because obviously, you know, it's, it's a lot different from being in a local church home. But as of right now, that's our only option. So what is your favorite part about being a virtual member? So being a virtual member, I don't know if it's, if, if it's, if it's actually been a virtual member, but I can only speak to Wheeler Baptist Church. And that is that every time I participate <clears throat> and I, and I, I log on, I feel like I'm in church, whether I'm in my bed, 
I'm in the kitchen, wherever. I think I've shot it more on this virtual experience than I have in an actual church because the service feels total. It feels like it's in my bedroom or in my kitchen with me. So the experience for, for me has been that I've never felt this before with a church, especially for the virtual. So I was so impressed because when the pandemic started, I felt like Wheeler was so progressive and innovative. They gave you that experience like you are in church. So I, I feel like I'm in church, even though it's virtual. I feel like I'm a member and I feel like I'm sitting right in the church. Wow. Well, do you have any plans to join us physically once everything is clear? Absolutely. I had actually had reservations to come for the triumphal entry uh, in October, but then that was um, postponed. So mm-hmm. I canceled that trip. And so I'm going to make when they do open, I plan to be there to participate. Awesome. Well, we look forward to meeting you. Thank you so much for, first of all, for being a part of this ministry and then also for joining us this evening to share your story. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to On the Avenue. Um, First of all, for our viewers, could you please introduce yourself, your name and where you're from? My name is Mr. Lusagio Cassiupa Sr. And I am from St. Louis, Missouri. Wow. Wow. St. Louis, Missouri. So what's your story? How did you find Wheeler Avenue? I am so glad you asked, Miss Adrian. Uh, <laughs> this was truly providential. Uh, it may sound hyperbolic to some, but there's one thing I teach our children and I tell them all the time, which is I will never lie to you. So I'm, I always love, I, I tell the truth. This is a true story. Uh, in 2016, I can remember well, uh, we were going for my wife's fun reunion and they were having it in Indiana. So we had to travel from St. Louis to, to Indiana. And normally we, we don't waste time and uh, frivolously while we're traveling. So normally we'll listen to some gospel music, listen to a sermon, or oh, some African music. I'm originally from East Africa. So we listen to some African music. This time I wanted us to, 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 to occupy our time listening to the word of God. I remember like it's right now. My wife was packing a few things in a bag. I went into our living room. And when the thought came to look up for something that we're going to watch along the way, I think we had about three hours drive. I just got on my knees on the couch, by the couch. And I prayed what I call one of those microwave prayers. It was just a simple prayer, but it was a very genuine prayer. I said, Lord, would you please direct me to find something that I can listen with my father? And I got off, I said, in Jesus' name, amen. And I got off, 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 my, off my knees and I went on YouTube and I didn't know this minister before. I've never seen him before. And I just saw this, 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 this sermon that was way, way up on the, on the YouTube thread. And I just picked it. And I, actually, I read the, the title of it. <laughs> it's called, I Never Scared. <laughs> and, and, and so I said, wait a minute. And it's the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, Will Avenue. And he was preaching this sermon at Alfred Street uh, Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, for a doctor. Now I know Dr. Howard John Wesley's uh, one of his anniversaries. So I say, I, you know, Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, I've never heard him before. I, I don't know anything about him, but the title intrigued me. You know, I ain't never scared. So let, 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 me, let me pick this one. And I picked that, set it up, and as we started driving, I started listening. I said, wait a minute, where has this brother been all my life? I mean, I, I, this is true, this is true account, uh, uh, Miss Adrian. Halfway through the sermon, my wife said, can you, can you pause this? And I paused, she said, we need to send this to our aunt. Our aunt was also making her way to the family reunion. And she said, no, 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 can you pause this? I need to share this with our aunt because we need to share this good. This is too much to keep it to ourselves. And we listened to the whole sermon, shouting the whole way. And if you know anything about that sermon, Dr. Cosby was preaching from Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So we listen once, and because we're three hours, we listen to it the second time. <laughs> and I think we listen it the third time halfway through, and then we stop. And then on our way back, we listen to it again. And that is how we came to know Wheeler Avenue. Because when I heard Dr. Cosby, and so that he was a guest speaker at uh, Alfred Street, but his home church was Wheeler Avenue. I, we, we, I went ahead and researched and we went ahead and started listening and, 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 and worshiping with Wheeler Avenue for services every Sunday. You, you didn't hear me right. I, I told you, we used, I know he preached the same service, but we listened to all four services every Sunday because it was such a blessing for us and we never took it for granted. We just felt so blessed that maybe he'll say something at the nine o'clock that he didn't say at the, at the seven o'clock. And sure enough, there will be a little twist. And then at the 11 o'clock and then the one o'clock, you know, the young, the young crowd and all of that. So that's how we came across uh, Will Avenue, that's how we came across um, Reverend Dr. Cosby. That is a beautiful story. What year was this? Uh, this was 2016. Okay. I remember that because his sermon sustained uh, through the presidential campaign. That's why I remember so well. <laughs> we needed something as an antidote to what we were witnessing in, in, the, in, the, in the social order. So I remember it was 2016. Wow. So you all, have you joined Wheeler Avenue officially? We have not, uh, I, think, I guess official, maybe on paper. No, we have not in that way, but we worship, we participate in, in the giving, we participate uh, in, in the whole worship experience. We have longed to come to Houston and, and make that experience personal. So we, we, we have not done it in, in that official capacity in such a way. Uh, but if, if I can share something with you, uh, in 2018, my darling wife and I, that's Mrs. Shea Kasupa, that's her name, Shay, we celebrated our 10-year anniversary in 2018. And for our anniversary, we saved up a little coins and we decided we're going to travel to Alexandria, Virginia in September because our anniversary is September 26th. And normally... Uh, Pastor Wesley's anniversary is also in September, at the end of September. So 2018, we traveled to Alexandria, Virginia, uh, with the goal of uh, participating in the anniversary over there. But the main thing was to be able to meet uh, uh, Dr. Cosby in person. And that was our gift to one another. And so we did that. And would you believe we were able to, to, to meet him on that Saturday evening? and took a, a couple of pictures together, uh, met your mom, uh, Sister Cosby, and the following, uh, I think, no, 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 that was Friday evening. On Saturday, they were going to the National Museum of African American History, and they were so gracious. They were so gracious to include us. Once they found out who we were, they were so gracious to include us on the trip and they gave us tickets as well. So we rode in the bus and behind us was Sister Cosby. So it was such a treat uh, to participate on that weekend. And that was our 10 year wedding anniversary to meet Pastor Cosby and to worship with part of our Wheeler Avenue uh, church members. That is so special. Wow. Yeah. So what would you say that you appreciate most about virtual membership? Virtu for us, virtual membership has afforded us the ability to be somewhere without being somewhere, if that makes any sense. Yes. We truly feel like we are at Willow Avenue when we worship because when, 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 like I say, when the praising time comes and the music ministry by Minister Lewis, and he's my brother, that, that, that man has been so kind to me. He has stayed in touch with me. Uh, we have stayed in touch with one another. When the music ministry comes, when the worship time comes, we worship. When the giving time comes, we participate likewise. And then we, uh, you know, we receive uh, like, like newsletters. We receive updates. Our children, we have young boys. One is 13 now. Another one is 11. And they, too, have been participating with the youth uh, programs. Oh. Uh, it was Sister St uh, Reverend Stephanie. I think she left 
and then Reverend Booth has taken over. So they're in contact and they participate that way. So we feel that the virtual worship has given us and afforded us something that otherwise we wouldn't have had, which is have a family community that we can belong in and participate. Uh, and then also when the spoken word is given, my goodness, every week it has been what we need on Wednesday when whether it's Dr. Cosby or uh, Reverend AJ is teaching, we are blessed likewise. So that has given us something that we otherwise wouldn't have. And that is the community and the family that we feel we belong to. I love it. Well, after yeah. the pandemic, when we finally are able to go back, um, do you all have plans on joining us in Houston? Yes, yes, we do. When the, I think we call it the cathedral, right? When the yes. cathedral opens up, we absolutely want to be there uh, by any means necessary. I know I'm channeling, I'm channeling Michael Max on that one, but by any means necessary, we really want to be there. Uh, I mentioned about our sons being 11 and 13. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, if you, you know, as Dr. Cosby would say, press pause and press rewind, right? And then press play. <laughs> uh, uh, in 2016, that's five years ago, our oldest son was eight. And so when we started listening to Dr. Cosby's sermons, if you don't mind me sharing this oh, brief testimony, when we started listening to that, Dr. Cosby's sermons, I remember one, one evening, one afternoon, uh, maybe three, four in the afternoon, I had gone outside the house. It was, this was during the week. This wasn't even a Sunday. It was during the week. I went on our backyard where we had a trampoline. And our two boys were just having, having a good time jumping up and down on the trampoline. And I was going to cut the grass. And all of a sudden, as I pulled the lawnmower, I heard our oldest son, who was eight at the time, shout to the top of his lung while he's jumping up and down the trampoline. And the Bible <laughs> say, I, I almost fainted. I said, wait a minute. I looked at him. I said, I can't believe this. And here he was, like he didn't even miss a beat. He kept on jumping on the trampoline. I don't know what was going in his mind, but one thing I heard was he said, and the Bible said, and then he kept on jumping on the trampoline. So I asked him, I said, Sadio, because we call him Sadio. He said, Sadio, what's going on? That's Dr. Cosby preaching right there. He said, yes, Baba. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about the sermon that Dr. Cosby was preaching last Sunday. And as I'm jumping up the trampoline, I remember when you get to the point where he said, and the Bible said. So that just, I couldn't wait. I ran into the house and told my wife, I said, you're not going to believe how this is blessing us. Because even our children, you know, they're internalizing this and it's a part of them. So when we went to Alexandria, Virginia, and he took a picture with Dr. Cosby, he was so happy along with his little brother to finally meet this brother, meet this man the man of God, whom he sees on television every weekend. And now it was like, wow, this is real, you know? And so that, that's, that, that's, that's one of the testimony I'd like to share. I love that you all have included your whole family because you may have heard, you know, our church is intentionally intergenerational. So the fact that it's not just you and your wife, you've also included your boys and they're active with the youth ministry. That is such a beautiful story. And I'm so glad that you all are a part of our Wheeler Wherever family. So thank you so much, Mr. Kasupa, for speaking with us this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And please, if you can pass uh, our gratitude and our, our prayers to uh, the Reverend Dr. Cosby, let him know we appreciate him. We love him along with your lovely mother, his wife. We pray for you all. We, I, I don't just say that, I really mean it. We pray for you all. And if you can let Minister Lewis uh, know that I appreciate him, we appreciate him. And the church family, we appreciate you. You may not realize how much you are blessing others who are outside the Houston area or the Texas, but you are blessing all of us. And we thank you. We look forward to seeing you in person one day. Thank you so much. Have a good Thank evening. You. you as well. Thank you. Hello and welcome to On the Avenue. Thank you so much for joining us. For the viewers who are watching right now, um, who may not know who you are, can you give us your first and last name and where you're from? Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Peary. 
and uh, that's Michael L. Perry. I can't forget my dad's middle name, L. Lennon. I am from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, the only city that there is <laughs> out there, Chicago, Illinois. Wonderful. So you are a part of our Wheeler Wherever family. So when did you decide to join virtually or how long have you been watching? What's your Wheeler story? Well, I've been watching Wheeler for a long time. I've known Dr. Cosby going on about 23 years because he used to come to uh, my home church here in Chicago, uh, Trinity United Church of Christ, when he would do the uh, youth revival. And our little nickname for him was Reverend Hot Sauce because he was so awesome. And um, I think because I've been watching Wheeler off and on, but really the pandemic just drew me in uh, because you have those moments of um, just, it's a weird feeling. Uh, of course, I should have put, forgive me, forgive me. No so, uh, of course, people want to call you when you're doing stuff like this. Um, that sense of uh, loss and the confinement and um, it was uh, very helpful spiritually for me. I uh, lost my wife in January. Sorry. And, uh, thank you. And um, the word that your dad brought in the congregation of uh, that awesome, awesome music ministry just soothes the soul. They do. And um, I have just been just moved because, uh, you know, I love the sermons. I love what Wheeler is doing. And it's, it's spiritually feeding me, even from here in Chicago. So, yes, I miss being inside sanctuary and, and all that because I, I had my tickets uh, <laughs> for Houston. I said, because I'm going to be in, El- and be in San Diego. Uh, for business. And I had told Jerry, I said, okay, I'm leaving on that Saturday. I won't make the the march through, but I said, I'll be there Saturday afternoon. And another one of your members, uh, Lachelle Sargent is one of my mentees. She's a former Miss TSU Hmm. at Texas Southern. And that's how your dad knows her because he always says, how's Miss TSU? You know, and she was already because of the homecoming, you know, um, that same weekend. And after joining back in May, I realized I had family and friends who were members of Wheeler. And, you know, we just got, we started talking because I had posted when I had uh, joined virtual and they said, Michael, you know, I go to Wheeler. I was just like, I said, and as they, they put it, Marcus Cosby is the blonde diggity. And I said, yeah, he is, he is. But the sermon, I will say this, and then I'll be quiet and let you ask your questions. But what got me was the sermon on July 25th, uh, when your dad talked about God and the having that winning hand, knowing that God is your partner. I shared that sermon, and I don't do this, with about 40 people. Wow. And um, so, no, no problem. um, (laughs) My cousin called me. I had been trying to get her to see it for a couple of days. She called me. She said, well, I'm going to listen to it on my way to work. I said, okay. And she said, I had it all queued up. I didn't do it. I'm going to listen on my way home. I said, okay. Then she called me about 45 minutes later and she didn't say anything, but I could hear background. And I kept saying, Tony, her name is Antoinette. I said, Tony, Tony. She says, I'm trying to get my breath. I said, told you. She said, Michael. And it changed her direction she was going in. She was going through some stuff. 
And that's the response that I got my aunt the same way. Just friends, they would call me. And I'm bossy. You know, I said, listen now, listen now. But I had to learn that people have to come to things when he says that you need it. He had just kept saying, tune in to Marcus, tune in to Marcus. I was like, yeah, 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 you know. And I tried to catch dad whenever he would come to Chicago. And it would be always something. And then one Sunday, that Sunday in November of 2020, just as the pandemic was moving, getting a really locked down kind of thing. And I just start tuning in and I don't miss a, set, miss a Sunday. I don't. Wow. Well, you've pretty much answered all of my questions. Um, <laughs> this has been great. I do want to know, though, outside, I know you said you've been being fed spiritually and that's beautiful. Are there any other things that you appreciate most about virtual membership? Well, one of the things that, that um, I, I, I do like um, about the virtual membership, and I'm just getting into the, the prayer calls on Wednesday, and it reminds me of Sunday, you connect to that battery charge, and you just like, but life's craziness and the crazy people and all of that will drain your battery like nobody's business. But the wonderful thing is, and this is what I've learned, is that Sunday charges you. Wednesday keeps you from the battery totally dying, okay? That Wednesday kind of gives you that, mm. and then it, it carries you to Sunday when you're on life support. And ding, 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 you're back again. OK, so the virtual piece for those of us who need the spiritual feeding and and are at home and you know, I'm, I, I have a media and PR company, so I'm constantly busy. But that day to day uh, message that even if it's nothing but the praise team, oh, my God, you know, the Sunday that they did because I'm a Walter Hawkins and Richard Smallwood nut, my family. My, my whole life growing up has been music. My uncle was Pop Staples. Mavis is my cousin. So I've been around music all my life, playing with Whitney and Michael. And I'm not throwing all that to say, but music has been an a integral part of my life. And the Sunday that they did the tribute to the Hawkins, I'm telling you, I don't wear contacts, but there was something in my contacts that entire Sunday. My eyes kept watering. I don't know what it was. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to say, I, you know, I'm a big mush ball, you know, <laughs> but it came back through all of the periods in my life of growth. And then you realize and you sit back and you look and you say. At. OK, here I go. At 60. And yeah, I do look good. Great black don't crack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's it's part of the journey that God has brought me to thus far. And I'm I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm I'm very grateful. And I thank God for Dr. Cosby, for Wheeler, for the whole Wheeler family, because you guys are just awesome. Everybody who has been in touch with me and has reached out to me to make sure that I've got everything that I need. That's important because, you know, it's one thing to say you're going to make that decision and people don't realize it's a rough decision in a lot of situations, but to have that, that extended reach, that extended, extended spirit of, of fellowship, even all the way here in Chicago, it means a lot. That's awesome. Well, do you? I know you said you had to cancel your ticket, but do you have any plans to come visit us whenever we're able to gather again? Girl, are you on crack? I can't wait. <laughs> Girl, please. Well, we can't wait to have you. <laughs> Absolutely. I told Jay, I said, you know, whenever they give us the red light, I'm coming. She said, not before I get there. I said, well, whatever. <laughs> I said, my your buddy, but look, he is, he's just, I'm telling you, he's a bomb diggity. 
Mm-hmm. That's what my little my uh, another mentee of mine who's uh, in the nursing program. I forget which hospital. And and I, because I'm always asking her. I said, "Hey, have you found a church home?" She said, "Yeah, Mike. Excuse me. Excuse me. She said, yeah, Mr. Perry. I said, "Would you please start calling me Mike?" She said, "I can't. I've been calling you Mr. Perry for so long." I said, "Whatever." So she said, "Yeah, I go to Wheeler Avenue." I said, "Shut up. You do not go to Wheeler." She said, you know about Will? I said, yes, I know Dr. Cosby. I know him well. She said, it need a bomb diggity. I said, yeah, he is. <laughs> That's her line. That is her line. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your Wheeler Wherever story with us. And we're looking forward to seeing you when the church's doors are open. Okay. Hopefully I wasn't too long. Sorry. Not I at all. You were great. Okay. Fantastic. Adrian, it's a pleasure meeting you. Nice meeting you too. How beautiful is it that while the pandemic literally separated us, it brought us together in so many other ways. I look forward to meeting our extended family members in the near future. Speaking of the near future, we were all looking forward to the triumphal entry, which was scheduled to take place last weekend, but had been postponed due to the rise in COVID-19 cases. As we continue to make preparations to go back to church soon, let's hear from our pastor about what those plans are and what we can expect as we safely make our return. Thank you for joining us on The Avenue. How are you this evening? I am absolutely fabulous. How are you, Ms. Adrian? I'm quite all right. Good. Well, we're going to jump right in, if you don't mind. Certainly. All right. We're talking about Wheeler Wherever. Yes. How did that phrase even come about? Do you remember? Come wow. about. Wow. I really don't remember. I know we were talking through some things in our staff meeting as to how we were going to ensure uh, that while we were in the virtual space, everyone still felt connected. Mm-hmm. So we started talking about how to increase uh, the connectivity uh, between membership that has to be, you know, in disparate locations, and we didn't have any idea it was going to be this long. Uh, but then we started getting members or inquiries about membership from people in other states, mm-hmm. and we were trying to process what does that mean, but how, does, how do you do that? That's not traditional church stuff. And so while we were talking through all of that, um, we came up with this phrase as we were getting ready for our 58th anniversary, uh, Wheeler Wherever. We are Wheeler Wherever. And it just kept, it caught on and uh, we've enjoyed using the phrase. And now we literally have uh, members in many different states and uh, we have persons who are watching us, viewing us every week from other countries. Yes. So it's a cool thing. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, obviously the, ne- the past 19 months have shifted everything almost. Um, and we've always had friends at Wheeler to worship virtually, but they were just tuning in. But now, like you said, there's the option for virtual membership while living in another place. So talk to us about that. What does that actually look like outside of just tuning in? Sure. So when persons make the request to be a part of our membership and they're in other locations uh, beyond Houston, beyond Texas, uh, we, of course, as is our custom, um, reach out to them as we've had to reach out to all new members since the pandemic began. And Reverend Janella Piles, who is in charge of our new members process, she and her team uh, make immediate contact with those persons uh, throughout the week that follows whatever, uh, whenever they join and they literally go through all of the processes of every other new member. So new members orientation is online and it's in, it's in a Zoom space and they share with all of the members who are in the Houston area uh, via that Zoom experience. And so it's the same process. And many people uh, who are uh, virtual members are now, well, not virtual members, but we are wherever members, they are participating in ministry. <laughs> they are participating in all the experiences uh, that, that are given uh, here through the church in this virtual space. So they're really connected in a way uh, that you would expect any member to stay connected. Yeah, even one of the guests that I spoke with earlier, he and his entire family are literal members from, I I forgot where they live, but their children even go through youth, they go to youth Bible study every (laughs) week. They participate in Sunday school. So I thought that was really cool that they are really, it's like they're actually here. They're really a part of the entire Wheeler experience. It's it's new for us. You know, this, that was not our 
conception of church uh, before the pandemic. So we've had to broaden our understanding of what it means to be the church or to be a local church because we're not really local anymore. So even after the pandemic, you're saying that this is something, an option that will continue through the years for members outside of Texas? I don't think we have an option to go backwards. I don't think we have the option. If people find merit in what is given at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, we have to expand our minds to figure out how to minister to the total person, even if that total person is in Omaha <laughs> or in Wyoming. Uh, we have to figure that out. And so we're going to be making uh, some continual steps to really understanding what it means to be Wheeler wherever, especially when we're Wheeler back on campus. Speaking of back on campus. I'm, Did I give you a segue? I'm glad that you a segue? said that. Yes. yes. All right. So in I'm the here. sermon that you gave on the first Sunday in September, where do we go from here? Part 18. Yes. Your response was, or your answer to that question is, we are going back to church. Lord have mercy. Changes have obviously been made from our initial plans for October 3rd, which has already passed. So what can we expect on that day? Do you know when that day is and what will it look like? Great question. So we're working on that plan right now. We've been working on that plan and it is our intent now. And I guess I'll go public with this now. Uh, I think I mentioned it uh, in a previous, previous service, but what we want to do is to make sure that we can inhabit the new space in a way that brings glory to God and works for the good of our congregation. So we are planning uh, to worship uh, with a very limited number of people in the cathedral on the third Sunday of this month. And so we'll take the leaders into the cathedral. We have a, a bevy of leaders. We've got hundreds of leaders uh, who are specifically, I need to be specify which leaders I'm talking about. Those are the clergy, uh, deacons, deaconesses, and trustees. Those who are the official leadership of our church uh, as, as is found in the book of Ezra, the leaders started out first. And so we'll, we'll have the leaders in worship uh, for those three weeks to make sure that everything's working. You know, we've got all this technology we want to do. And when we had our original plan, we, we were just going to go in yeah. and we were just going to hope and pray that everything worked right. <laughs> so we'll take our leaders in for three weeks, third, fourth and fifth Sundays of, of this month. And then on the first Sunday, all those who are, who are determined to get to the campus of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, I think there may be a registration process. I'm not really sure just yet. But all those who want to get back to Wheeler Avenue, we want them to be here uh, for our two Sunday services at 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Okay. Well, obviously, you know, you said every, uh, clearly everything is biblical here. You said it was in the book of Ezra. I didn't even know that. So I think that's really amazing. But how did you all come to these conclusions? I'm sure there was a lot of thought, prayer, and conversation that went into this. So take us through some of that as much as you're willing to share. So we had this great plan. We had this plan that we were going to come back to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church October 2nd and 3rd. It was going to be fabulous. Triumphal entry on October 2nd. Now, of course, this is all my plan. I, yes. And you know, the, there's the adage that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. And so I had, I had this great plan written down. I mean, we had all this stuff worked out. And uh, order of worship was prepared for the triumphal entry, which was going to be Saturday. We're going to have all of our community reps here, everybody who wanted to come. Come on and let's share in a time of celebration that God has finally allowed the vision to come to pass. And um, then there was a spike, as you well know. And so we had to scrap that plan. We had to change the plan because we did not want to put anyone in harm's way unduly. So uh, the chair of our boards, that's uh, Chairman uh, Brian Hicks, Chairwoman Penny Nobles, and Chairman Omar Reed, and the senior staff and I had 10 days of prayer. We had focused prayer, 9 o'clock every morning, um, and we just talked to the Lord about what decision the Lord wanted us to make with regard to returning to campus. And it was obvious by the end of those 10 days, it was not time. We knew that. Now, nobody ever wants to have God say no to your, to your prayer request. Now, nobody wants to hear no. But we had to realize that we, we all felt that this was not the Lord's will for October 2nd and 3rd to be our, our reentry um, time. And so I've been, I, I continued to pray. We didn't have those formalized prayer meetings with all the team. But I kept, kept talking to God, kept talking to God, kept trying to hear from God. And it was clear about a week and a half, two weeks later, that God was not just saying no. I was saying not yet. 
God would say, just wait a little while longer, wait a little while longer. And I heard clearly from God that the third Sunday was the time for us to re-enter um, the campus and bring the saints back to the, to bring the saints to the cathedral as we begin. So we're not going to do the big triumphal entry uh, like we had planned to on the Saturday before we return. We'll do that at a later date uh, when things really clear up and we can bring more people onto the campus. But uh, I heard the Lord say third Sunday. I heard him say it, and I, I'm trying to do what the Lord says do. Okay. So that's leadership. So yes. any word on when everybody will yes. be able to come? The first, Sunday, first Sunday of first November. Sunday November. Yes, November. first okay. Sunday of November. Um, it is the plan. Now, we have to do that in a way that is conducive uh, to the health protocols and all that. We don't want to put anybody in harm's way. We'll be wearing our masks. We have to do that. Uh, we've been doing it, and it's been, it's been demoralizing and frustrating, and uh, nobody really, I don't know who really likes a mask, uh, <laughs> but we've had to do that, and we'll have to do that when we come back because we're bringing people from every part of the Wheeler Wherever mm -hmm. family experience, and so we'll have to be as safe as we can. I hope that the majority of our membership is vaccinated. I hope that we're getting vaccinated so that we reduce the risk of harming people. That's really what vaccination is all about, reduce the risk of having harm come to us and having us pass harm on to anyone else. So speaking of vaccinations, will that be a requirement coming back? So it's a requirement for some of us. Those of us who work around here, we've had to bow down to the requirement uh, because we don't want to, to allow those who are serving the people to harm the people. Mm -hmm. So it has been a requirement for, for, for some of us. Uh, it is not the requirement for the entirety of the membership. We can't do that. We can't mandate to the membership of a congregation that you have to go get vaccinated. But I'm strongly encouraging. Uh, ardently urging every one of our members uh, to do that for not only your own safety, and they've heard me say this week after week after week, that's just for your own safety, it's for the safety of others. We want to be a good neighbor. That's biblical, going back to your phrase earlier, and we want to maintain uh, that kind of environment where people feel safe in the Lord's house. Well, I think that's a great note to end on. Thank right. you so much for Thank your you. time and all of the information that you shared with us this evening. Thank you, ma'am. My delight. Because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we want to share a few pieces of information with you each week that we hope will help raise awareness and save lives. According to the CDC, each year in the United States, about 255,000 cases of breast cancer are diagnosed in women and about 2,300 cases in men. About 42,000 women and 500 men in the United States die each year from breast cancer with black women having a higher rate of death from breast cancer than white women. Please know that it is very important to pay attention to your body and to know what to look for as everyone's bodies are different. Some symptoms include new lump in the breast or underarm, pain in any area in the breast, any change in the size or shape of the breast. Keep in mind that these symptoms can happen with other conditions that are not cancer, so as always, talk to your doctor if you have any concerns. For more information, visit cdc.gov. Once again, if you have not already, please do your part in putting an end to this pandemic by getting vaccinated. And to everyone, whether you're vaccinated or not, Continue to wear your masks and keep your hands clean because we are going back to church and we want to do so as safely as possible. Thank you all so much for tuning in this evening. Come back next week for more as we discuss self care. We're going to be talking about everything from skin care to mental health, spiritual gifts and more. We're going back to church y'all. We're almost together physically, but until then, you're still on the avenue.